So I often get asked, what are the warning signs of prostate cancer? Interestingly, there really are often no warning signs. The reason we detect prostate cancer in today's world is because of routine blood testing for PSA. Historically, when there wasn't very often PSA-based screening or blood testing evaluating for the presence of prostate cancer, patients would often present with back pain, issues with movement of their legs, bowel or bladder control issues, and that would lead us to a diagnosis of prostate cancer. But by that time, the cancer was often too far gone because it had spread to the bones, resulting in those signs and symptoms. In today's era, with the advent of PSA blood testing, we're able to detect prostate cancer at a much earlier stage in its development. And as a result, there really are no symptoms except for the fact that you may have an elevated PSA or a nodule on your prostate. We've been fortunate to be able to do this just because now that we're able to diagnose prostate cancer when it's asymptomatic or without symptoms, oftentimes it's localized to the prostate and that provides us a tremendous amount of opportunity to treat the prostate cancer with curative intent. Because there's no real warning signs for prostate cancer, it's difficult to detect clinically localized prostate cancer unless you have PSA blood tests. PSA is a protein that's made by the prostate. It's made by both cancerous tissue as well as benign prostate tissue or non-cancerous tissue. It leaks out into our blood, and so routine blood tests are able to measure PSA levels. In today's era, the main way that we are able to diagnose prostate cancer, and that too in its early stages of development, is to undergo routine PSA blood tests, which is referred to as PSA screening. It's often done by our primary care providers when we go in for our other routine blood tests, such as cholesterol, sugar, but it does involve a shared decision-making process. There's been a lot of controversy surrounding the benefits of PSA blood testing. But the thought is, PSA blood testing, because it does allow for the detection of prostate cancer in its earlier stages of evolution, it offers opportunity to improve the oncologic outcomes associated with the treatment of prostate cancer. So it does involve speaking with your primary care provider and asking them whether a PSA blood test is right for you. The current guidelines state that in patients that are between the ages of 55 and 69, PSA blood testing or routine PSA testing should be discussed. And after a shared decision-making process, as long as you understand the merits as well as the downsides of PSA testing, PSA screening should be undertaken. In patients who are younger than 55, things that may prompt you to get PSA testing include a family history of prostate cancer and certain ethnicities such as African American heritage. The real debate happens if PSA blood testing in individuals that are 70 or older. Because prostate cancer, even that which is clinically localized, evolves very slowly, the exact benefit derived from treatment of those cancers in elderly individuals is not very well understood. But if you're a robust 70 plus year old, with an actuarial life expectancy that exceeds 10 years, it may benefit you to undergo PSA-based screening. And again, this is a discussion you should have with either your primary care physician or a urologist. My name is Parrish Shah. I'm a urologic oncologist at the Mayo Clinic. I'm Derek Lomas, a urologist at Mayo Clinic. Mayo Clinic on Prostate Health offers patients clarity on issues dealing with the prostate, It'll walk you through topics ranging from prostate health, screening for cancer, enlargement, inflammation, and really covers all things related to the prostate. It can be a one-stop resource for you. So this is a resource to help provide clarity, not only for patients, but also their families as they navigate their journey dealing with prostate issues.